a year on um, from when I was last filming in this tree. Um, I've done a lap of the lake this morning and uh, I've seen sort of a few signs of fish out on the surface. I wasn't 100% sure so I scaled a few trees here and there and my gut instinct was that it was tench. However, there was a chap fishing down the other end of the lake and he said that he'd seen a big fish roll last night, you know, a big wide frame fish. And um, obviously it made me think that there's a possibility that they may be down there. Um, anyway, I carried on, you know, as you do. I've come up to this end of the lake and I've sort of peered my head through the opening between the trees. You know, the greenery has come right up now. So um, the camouflage for the carp is just completely different. And, uh, you know, as I've peered through, I've seen a fish on, on sort of, what I can only class as the spot or, you know, the area that I had them last year when I was filming them. Um, and it was a big fish. Now, I don't know if they're just passing through and I just caught it as it was grazing through, but as I stepped up onto the tree branch, you know, I did it quietly. Um, and as you can hear in the background now, there's walkers walking past all the time. There's dog walkers, they're always shouting, throwing all sticks. So they can't be too spooky. So I'm trying to tell myself that as I got up, you know, it was just complete coincidence that they were already on the move and they were passing through. When I looked, it looked like it was stopped sort of dead over the gravel, um, but I couldn't make it out. It was either um, one of one of two, it was either the one, um, or as I said before, it could have been the, you know, the second in command one, a fish that I've had, you know, a few times, um, but it was, it, it, you know, it was right there, it was two of them, and one was so much bigger than the other. You can always tell by the paddle on it, the tail was huge. Um, and there's only two, possibly three, that I've got that sort of tail size, you know. Um, so I've broken up a few baits, um, some baits that I've had in a bucket for a while, in all fairness, um, in a little bit of like, um, what, like a bit of that yeast extract. Um, so they're really pungent. I've cracked them open, they smell lovely. Um, so I've crumbed them up. So I've got a bit of a smell coming through the water and I've trickled them out onto that same spot as last time. Um, so hopefully, hopefully they return. If they do, I already have a plan in place from, you know, the previous year where I can put a rod. Um, the tree actually looks better for casting this year. I don't know if it's not grown as much or it's grown slightly different. But I can probably get a, a line out to it quite easily. So um, I'm going to hang fire here. Like I said, I've sprinkled some bait out. I've also put some bait on the other margin, um, which is an area that they were passing between um, last time. So I just wanted to cover both angles, really. This one's got a lot more coverage, though. It's a lot more shaded. So um, if they get into here, I'll see them straight away. Whereas that one out there has a little ripple on the lake. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of light shining down, even with the Polaroids. So, um, yeah, this is me for now. I'm going to probably hang out on this tree for a couple of hours. Um, and if they turn up, obviously, I'll try and get a rig in place. Um, only, though, only if the fish arrives that I'm after. I'm not just going to put a rig in place if, you know, if fish turn up. Um, I need to be able to target that one fish. Um, I don't want to be missing a chance by putting a rig out and maybe one of the smaller ones or an, another one or any fish apart from that one takes it really. So I want to make sure he's here, double check that, then I'll try and get a rig in place and then I'll see what we can do. But obviously, like I said, as soon as I got up in the tree, they shot off. Um, just like that steady pace, they moved out. So let's just hope that they come back.
So here we are back again, um, back on the Park Lake. Um, just on my second night of the year. Sorry if that wind is a little bit loud on the speaker, but uh, it's just sort of picked up now. Uh, so yeah, back. It's my second night of the year. I done my first night back in early March, um, and then literally done Friday night, Saturday night. My friend done Sunday morning. He had the uh, he had the fish. So, um, obviously I decided to go elsewhere for the spring as such, which in, in all fairness, it turned out to be a bit of a blessing in disguise. But um, it sort of pushed me away, it pushed me to the big pit. Um, now, at the time, I was a little bit unsure what I was going to do, but like I said, it did turn out to be a blessing in disguise. Um, and I'd never done a spring on there, so it was quite exciting. I'd fished it more so through the autumnal months. So going over in spring was a completely different atmosphere for me because it wasn't nowhere near as green. Um, it was bleak, barren, I guess. Um, but when I got there, um, as you do, the first couple of trips, almost like recce sessions, you know, sort of finding your feet, making sure you know what you're doing. Um, and the first couple of trips, I think, were, you know, they went unsuccessful, let's say. Um, but they were successful because I did find, <clears throat> I did find where the fish were. Going on from that, um, I did, I think, I think seven or eight nights in total, and in the end, I landed five cod um, and about forty tench. Um, but uh, there's a Spitfire going over. Yeah, five cart, literally about 40 tench. One night I think I had about 13, 14 tench. It was um, unbelievable. You can imagine the state of the hooks and the rigs and stuff. Um, it all started with um, a stocky, um, a stocky that's come on, and it, you know, you wouldn't class it now as like a, oh, great, I've had a stocky. This stocky was a big plated, almost triple, well, I think it was a triple row linear, and on one side I think it almost had four row linear like a quadruple row linear. <clears throat> Incredible fish and definitely massive contender for like, you know, target fish in the future for a lot of anglers. Um, I didn't get any video footage of that. I did get some great pictures, um, but I didn't get any video footage. Um, as I didn't from, from any of the spring captures actually, unfortunately, but you know, the pictures, they tell a story. Um, but that was the first bite that come along and that was being an opportunist really, fishing to sort of where I'd seen signs of activity so I sort of continued that um, on <clears throat> and then the next trip down um, I did the same looked for where they were ended up getting back in the same swim um, and I had two I had uh, a linear like a almost like a apple slice linear again it was a stocky but you just wouldn't you know you wouldn't characterize it with a stocky just because how it looked it looked like it had been around the houses a bit um, it was incredible fish um, you know, darker than the other one, a lot darker, and almost you'd be surprised that it came from the same batch, but they did. And then I had a small, um, a small uh, mirror, dark chestnutty brown, um, scraper twenty, but again, completely different. I'm pretty sure it's a stocky. Um, I've asked the question. I'm pretty sure it's a stocky, um, but again, a really nice fish. And then <clears throat> on from that. The next trip I went down, I had another one, um, a linear, um, again, a stocky, uh, 24, 25 pound, I think it was, but I didn't take any pictures of that one because it was a repeat capture. But in my head, I was thinking to myself, why am I picking up these stockies? You know, I must be either doing something that is working for them, or I need to change slightly, or my, you know, is it just my luck hasn't come yet? Or do I need to change something to actually target the big cart, the original strain, let's say. And after a little bit of oh and an R and I decided to slightly change my tactics and find an area. Um, not bait it heavily, but bait it with, you know, a good offer and a bait, let's say, you know, mixed size of boilie and then some crushed, not like crumbed up, but just like snapped in half as opposed to like chopping them up um, baits. <clears throat> fish tightly into an area that I could fish two rods on um, 
and I found this spot, it's about 100 yards out, real nice spot, you know, when you, I mean, with the braid, obviously, it's convincing all the time, almost, but I was fishing the Apex braid, um, and it cast like a dream, and as I felt it down on the spot, I knew it was silk, but it was, you know, really convincing, I thought, you know, that, I'm happy with that, that's the one. It wasn't massive, I'd say, the size of a bivy, you know, size of a ground sheet of a, like, a brolly or something like that. So it's, you know, there was casts where I was doing like two or three casts to get it on the spot because uh, at 100 yards and on a big pit, you get a bit of wind and stuff and you're missing it by like six inches and you're kicking yourself asking what's going on. But once I was sorted and done the cast a few times, I knew the spot well and I could get it on it nearly every time. Um, <clears throat> so I went into the night, um, that trip, um, feeling really confident. I actually rang my mate, Charlie, and we were on the phone to each other. Um, He's fishing up on Farnham Flint in Reading, and uh, we were just having a general chin wag, really. And we were talking about fish from the lakes and stuff like that. And you know, he was saying, you know, you're going to have this, I'm going to have that, and you know, well, when are you going to have it? Let's say. And I was saying to him that uh, I'd love to catch this one fish, um, but there's also, you know, these other two as well. And, we got onto the conversation. I said, "There's one in there. It looks a bit like Arthur." And I said, "It's it's an amazing fish." And I said, "It's the one that I realistically want to catch more than anything else." Um, but there's also two others as well. There's one big sort of uh, mirror, like an ampy string, real incredible fish. Um, and then there's one in the lake that's probably the biggest in the lake, which is um, sort of a big brown chestnut, sort of like gutsy mirror, let's say. Um, big sloping head, massive gob on it, you know, real big carp, you know, real big carp. Um, and uh, he was then talking about a couple of fish out of Flint, and I said, you know, they sound amazing. He sort of showed me a few pictures, and I said, God, that's the one there. And anyway, that was that. We sort of said our goodbyes and wished each other luck and then nodded off and then uh, <laughs> woke up to a bite. Um, and it was just taking line from the off, just absolutely peeling, taking line from the off. Um, I hit into it and it literally held deep <clears throat> for what like felt like forever. It's probably about 30 seconds to a minute out, like, you know, 100, 120 yards out, just holding deep, real plodder. You know when it's a big fish because they plod. Um, and uh, I had it on for quite a while in all fairness. And had loads of times I felt, oh God, you know, because you do early spring, sometimes you tend to just nick them in the lip and stuff like that. And I was thinking, oh, don't come off. This is a good one, and so on and so forth. And uh, it got it got it into about 20 yards out, and it was powering up and down the shelf. There's like a shelf that drops off. It was sort of like pumping up and down it. And I thought, oh, this is hairy stuff. And in the end, it sort of like almost gave up for a second. And it sort of came up the shelf. And as soon as I got it in that shallower of water, once it was up the shelf, I knew that it was basically defeated. So I sort of just kept the pressure on, kept the tip down, just kind of drive it in towards me as much as possible. And then um, she popped up there, this massive frame car, massive frame car. And, you know, from straight away, I was like, that's that's one of the good ones. That's, that could be the one. Um, and I, I've grabbed the net, and I've just just slipped it under the net. I had a bit of weed around it, sort of new growth weed, just sort of all up around the mouth and stuff, slightly over the head. I think it had just happened when it had come up the shelf. Um, I've slipped it into the net, bundled it all in, you know, and you're like rushing down into the water and stuff. And I've peered into the net, ripped off these little bits of weed. I can see the pop-up sort of hanging out the, the mouth, dead centre. Um, and I can tell by where it is, the pop-up's almost in the mouth. So I'm thinking, that is absolutely nailed. That was not going anywhere. Um, and then as I've sort of lifted to look into the net, I've seen the width of the fish, and it is colossal. It is huge. And I've just thought to myself, what fish is it? I've rolled it onto his side, had a little look, and straight away I was like, wow, that is possibly the biggest fish in the lake and it was the one that I was chatting to Charlie about just in the evening prior and uh, I couldn't believe it and uh, 
it was it i mean we weighed it obviously when i done the pictures and stuff it was an upper 40 incredible fish new pb mirror for me not common or like uk pb but for, for a mirror that was the biggest mirror i've ever caught in this country and uh I was, you can imagine, I was completely made up. So I got on the phone to my mate Dave. I said, you know, look, I've had one. It's a proper one. Can you come down? He said, yeah, no worries. Come down. We'll have breakfast, cups of teas and all that. And then we just sat and had a cup of tea first. It was misted. Such low fog. You just couldn't even see the far bank. Couldn't see the activity yet. All you could see was this black storm pole and this sort of, like, DPM retainer in, in the edge that just looked black because the silhouette was just incredible you know it was such a morning and then we've just got this carp out i said like i said i didn't get any video footage of it but i got some incredible pictures um dave as always does me proud for that um he's a godsend for that and uh yeah what what a way to sort of cap off the end of spring for me because i knew i had stuff planned after that i knew i had like a two-week holiday planned I knew it was a couple of weeks where I couldn't go because of like, it was my little boy's fourth birthday um, and you know bits and bobs and I couldn't go straight after we got back so when we got back on like the, the Friday night I couldn't just go straight to their lake so I knew there was a gap where I wouldn't be able to fish so that was just an absolute perfect ending to the spring for me and it sort of led me back here and as luck would have it that fish hasn't been out um, since it came out really early in the year. Um, so, you know, it gives me a strike of confidence. Um, and I, I dropped in last week and I found fish straight away and I was picking them off. I was like, you know, I can see who you are, what you're doing. But he wasn't there. He wasn't there. But he's never too far away. He's never too far away. Uh, but I couldn't see him. There was only two fish I couldn't find. It was him and the, and, the, and the big stocky that's gone on to like big weights. Couldn't see them too. And that big stocky, I usually find, I usually find him on his own. So I wasn't too surprised, and it's the same with the big with him. You know, I usually find him on his own as well. Um, but that's just part of it for me, and that's that's just I guess that's just part of the obsession is just sort of knowing that he ain't going to be there, and I've got to go and find him elsewhere. I that's tracked into me. Um, but when I got down last night, I found them again in a similar area. I found them out on the top, and I I, th I think I got them on my phone almost instantly, just sort of filming them. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, we're, we're in for a bite here. Um, I sat up really late last night. Again, my mate Dave come down, we had a curry. Um, and we were just sat here sort of listening, watching him. And he came and had a little look as well. He said, you know, some decent fish there, but he's not there, is he? I said, no, he's not. Um, and then we had a, we had a curry and then had a few ciders and <clears throat> I got my rods out. I think I just fished three choddies in areas that I knew or areas I'd seen them before. Or at one area I caught from. It was a bit of a nightmare this morning because all three rods just before bite time or during, so let's say from like half four to like quarter six, had tench. And then by the time I'd redone them all, the one that I'd redone had another tench in about 20 minutes. And I just felt like it was completely done. You know, it was broad daylight then and the, the, the chance had gone. So I decided to just leave the rods out. And I thought to myself, instead of just smashing it to a pulp, I want them to push back in here today. I want to be able to see him, see if I can find him, locate him. If I get a chance, obviously I'll fish in short for him, you know, I'll fish for him a bite. If I can see him, I'll fish for one bite. Um, so that's the plan of action. That's where I'm at right now. Um, no rods in. I'm just about to go for a move, which I think it's about half past nine. Just had probably my fourth, fifth coffee of the morning, so I must be buzzing. <laughs> I've not had anything to eat yet. I have got a bit of leftover curry from last night, but I doubt that's going to go down too well. Um, I've got some bacon in a bag, so I'll probably make myself a bacon sarnie at some point, but I'm itching to get around and see if they're in the edge. So I'm going to take a little bit of bait with me, trickle a little bit of bait in. Fair play to my mate last night. I didn't have any bait. And my mate Mike, who uh, works at Baitworks, he, uh, <laughs> I text him saying, mate, look, I'm going to get down to the park really late. I'm not going to be there like usual, sort of midday. Get to the shop. Is there any chance you can uh, drop me some bait? And he was sort of saying, oh, we might cross paths on the way back, you know, driving back to Bristol. And I said, oh, it's going to be tight. So we come to the conclusion, could he dump it sort of in, in the ditch by the side of the lake for me? <laughs> and I uh, had a text from him, a picture of him or a video going like, this is where the gate is. You know, this is where the ditch is. I put it down there. And he's texting me like, you know, I feel like a drug dealer doing this. <laughs> but, you know, as, 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 it, as it was, I drove up. 
looked at looked at his video, looked down the looked down the ditch, and there it was. There was the bait, and I <laughs> took the bait, put it in the van. Job done. Thanks very much for that, mate. Um, but you need help like that, you know. When you're vision a busy schedule and you're, you're stuck for time, mates like that is what help you succeed. And I got a few of them, and they're all good as gold. So uh, yeah, that that was class. Fair play to him. But like I said, I'm probably going to just get around there now. So I'm going to switch the camera off, and then hopefully later on when I check back in for this evening. I'll either have a real good plan set for the evening or maybe something better, but I don't know yet. I will speak to you soon. up a tree and uh, basically cut a long story short I, uh, I was walking along the bank uh, and I seen something break the surface so um, I've scaled this tree um, and almost instantly I've spotted fish um, sort of beneath me so I've got a clearing in amongst the uh, in amongst the weed and uh, I've spotted him straight away, he's there. Um, so I'm just sitting out away from the pack a little bit. He did glide through, he looked like he had a little drop down on the spot, but he didn't stop for long. He literally dipped down, almost knows something, and then shot off again. Um, but he's out in the middle of the lake at the moment. Uh, try, and, try and see if I can get some footage of him, but he looks so big. It's long and wide and I feel like I'm in pole position. You know, like I said uh, earlier on, I did last night and they were here. But I just didn't know if he was here because I didn't see him. But um, I've seen him now. He's there. It's just whether he hangs around and whether he's up for a feed. Because if he is, we've got every chance of catching him. I'll have to see. I guess it's just one of those trips uh, like I said yesterday um, I seen him a couple of times uh, one time he looked maybe up for it um, I see him sort of sat out in the middle of the lake soaking it up I did have a few opportunities yesterday where I could have got a bike um, but I decided obviously it wasn't the right thing to do because they would just be repeat captures and obviously it seems a bit of a waste of time. I had two different known 40 pounders feeding on a spot, you know, I've got to let them out um, on two different occasions yesterday and uh, I decided against putting a rod in basically, um, mainly because they're both fish I caught before. Um, one other fish did come in, um, a fish that I caught many, many years ago at um, just double figures, which is now a 40 pounder, which is it's incredible really, what sort of weight gain that fish has had. It's stacked on weight. Um, but 
that was a stock in, it's just stacked the weight on. Now, obviously it would be a repeat capture. That one did come in yesterday. I did see it feed on the spot. And it's probably one that I would have probably dropped the rig on because even though it's the same fish, it's, it's, an, it's an entirely different fish now, let's be honest. You know, I think I caught it at like 12 pound many, many moons ago. And now obviously it's sort of scraped with 40 pounder. So, uh, Lo and behold, someone, someone told me it's done 46. Um, I know it came out, uh, I think this year, maybe at 40 pound uh, ounces, but it's obviously a big fish. Um, but no, I didn't go for it just because, obviously I was hoping that um, he came in, the big guy, um, but when he did come in, he stayed, he stayed just under the tree coverage. I seen him sort of roll on his side once almost, not like flank, but have like a little turn in the bush. And as he done it, he's like a half lean, the, the back end of the linear just opened up and I seen all his white bits. Uh, and obviously that got the blood flowing a bit. I had a rod in hand at the time. I was literally, there's some sort of like um, man-made swims with like entry down to the water on some steps and I sort of came down them. I had them feeding just off the edge of the tree there and I, I literally, I, I don't know how many times I walked back and forth from the other side of the lake from where I was fishing to go around there and sort of um, put a rod in or check it or put a little bit more bait in. But I, I literally didn't have my rods in the water as in on, on my alarms all day yesterday. And they were out of the water at like five in the morning, like I said, um, just because of this tench nonsense really. Um, and then I just followed the fish around all day. Um, I did set up last night, um, obviously uh, rods on the deck, um, but it never uh, it never capitalised to anything. So uh, it's one of those. I fished one to a an area where I'd seen fish during the day, um, and I had a feeling that they might, you know, they might stay there overnight. So I put a little bit of bait in. <coughs> Sorry, hey, <laughs> hey, you just kicking in. Um, but no, nothing. So that's the end of that. But um, as is, you know, I mean, it's part of the parcel, I guess. You know, um, yeah. Next, next time we're down, obviously I'll try again. Um, I'm hoping, realistically, a couple of even sessions. Um, maybe even some uh, just like day trips, you know, just trying to get on the fish and locate them. Don't get me wrong, I want to do the nights, but when I'm doing the nights, it's like a lottery draw because if I do get a fish, there's any chance. Now, if that route comes, I will take it and I will start having to go through fish to try and catch him. But at the moment, with you know, summer, spring visibility, I don't want to do that. I want to see if I can find him in the edge. You know, yesterday the park was manic. There was people jumping in. There were speakers going like you wouldn't believe, sort of like drum and bass. Um, people going around on kayaks, canoes, um, inflatable dinghies, everything you could imagine yesterday. Um, and literally, the craziest part about it all was there was people doing that <clears throat> 30, 40 yards away from where I was seeing the fish earlier in the day. And I couldn't bring myself to go around there when they were there because it was just too frustrating for me. But the second they left, I went around there. And when I say the second they left, I mean they weren't even back in their car yet and I was already walking around. And I looked down on the spot and there was carp there. So they were obviously unfazed by it, which is just crazy because the amount of noise, I was sat there, I was gritting my teeth. There was a couple of people on kayaks sort of floating over and I was saying, come on mate, can you like, go down the other end and all that sort of stuff? Mainly because, you know, you're not allowed boats in there anyway. Um, and I don't want them over the top of me. Don't get me wrong, I'm never rude, I'm always friendly, and I just say, look mate, any chance you could just sort of stay to the right, and they usually just happily oblige. But obviously you get the odd, you know, chance there, and it's a little bit chopsy, but whatever, they can crack on. But clearly the fish aren't phased by it, they're so used to it, they've seen it so many years on and off, because this park, it gets absolutely rammed in the summer with barbecuers. I mean, you've got a problem with litter, I went and checked yesterday, in all fairness, everyone that was there, they picked everything up, which is amazing, which is one of the first times, because I've seen so many bad circumstances in the past. But that's where we are at the moment. No joy this weekend, I've done two nights, so I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna get a hound in for doing two nights, catching nothing, and then saying, oh, I wanna go again. <laughs> but um, that is the part of it. I would imagine next week, 
I'll probably just do the one night, that's my normal situation, and then uh, hopefully we can just continue seeing him, and then when we do get the chance to catch him, or when I do get the chance to catch him, that'll be it. So um, I'll speak to you soon guys, and catch up next time I'm down the lake.